Students, it is start of endocrinology from our side. Uh, we'll discuss today is the hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is a set of disorder that involve excess synthesis and secretion of the thyroid hormone by the thyroid gland and the resulting elevation in the levels of free thyroxine, that is FT4, free triiodothyronine, that is FT3 or both lead to the hypermetabolic condition of thyrotoxicosis. So this is basically a disease in which thyroid gland become hyperactive and the secretions of both end results that is T3 and T4 get increased and so there are many symptoms which we'll discuss further in the lecture. This is, uh, there are some definitions, hyperthyroidism Increase production of the thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormones are the end result of the thyroid gland. Primary hyperthyroidism is a disease of thyroid gland itself. That is, there is some thyroid pathology, so there is increased thyroid hormones. However, the secondary hyperthyroidism is not the pathology of the gland itself. This is somewhere problem in the pituitary or maybe less likely in the hypothalamus. So the pituitary increases thyroid stimulating hormone somehow or the other and a result and as a result thyroid hormones are increased. Then this is the toxic multinodular goiter or it is also called plumber's disease. There is nodules which act independently independently means they are independent of the negative feedback and they increase the thyroid hormone pathophysiology uh, normally the secretions of the thyroid hormone is controlled by a complex feedback mechanism involved in the interaction of stimulatory and inhibitory factors uh, which we will discuss in the next slide and the thyrotropin releasing hormones trh from the hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary to release TSH. So this is the picture which shows that the hypothalamus excrete thyroid releasing hormone uh, which is uh, which act on the pituitary gland which in turn release TSH which act on the thyroid gland and there are production of T3 and T4 which are metabolically active and they have got impact or results on the target organs but there is uh, when there is sufficient quantity of t3 and t4 are present in the circulation they act as a negative feedback on the pituitary and the hypothalamus and hence the production of the trh and tsh get stops and there is a balance between the production and the synthesis um, synthetic stimulation in this axis Whenever there is disturbance, like there is increased production of TRH or TSH, which is independent of the negative feedback, or increased production of the T3 and T4, which is not dependent on the TSH, then there is pathology. Same picture in a different way. So now, come, uh, now we come about the causes of the thyrotoxicosis. This is the Graves disease, number one. Then are the toxic multinodular goiter. Then is the auto autonomously functioning solitary thyroid nodule. Then is the thyroiditis, which may be subacute, that is D. Carwain's or postpartum. Then is the iodine induced hyperthyroidism, which may include drugs like amiodarone, the famous one radiographic contrast media containing iodine and iodine prophylaxis programs. Uh, the causes of the thyrotoxicosis will continue in the next slide, but I want to tell you one of the things that the Graves disease is the most common cause of the thyrotoxicosis. Then comes the toxic multinodular goiter, then is the autonomously functioning solitary thyroid nodules, then are the thyroiditis and then is the iodine induced like things. Then the source of the thyroid hormone may not be the thyroid gland itself that as a factitious hyperthyroidism people are taking drugs like thyroxine 
for no reason. Stroma ovarii, that is the ovarian carcinoma which produced the thyroid hormone. TSH induced, TSH producing pituitary adenomas, uh, which causes, of course, secondary hyperthyroidism. This is not the pathology of the thyroid gland itself. Or choriocarcinoma and hydatiform mole, which produce TSH or TSH like substances, which have got uh, receptors, mimicry, and they increase the production of T3 and TSH from the thyroid gland. Then is the follicular carcinomas. Again, we come to the definitions of uh, effects of the thyroid, uh, increased production of the thyroid secretions. What is the exophthalmos? Exophthalmos is the bulging of the eyeball. Uh, this is the hallmark of the Graves disease. Uh, there is inflammation and swelling and hypertrophy of the retroorbital muscles. So there are three things, inflammation, swelling, and hypertrophy. So the eyeball is pushed forward, like you can see in the picture as well. So in exophthalmos, both limbus, upper and lower limbus are visible of the patient, while uh, the other term which is called lid retraction, only the upper lid is retracted and hence only the upper limbus is visible. So first of all, we discuss Graves disease. Graves disease is the most common cause of the thyroid toxicosis. This is an autoimmune disorder affecting the thyroid gland and it is characterized by an increase in the synthesis and release of the thyroid hormone. The thyroid gland is typically enlarged. Graves disease is much more common in women and the ratio of men to women is 8 into 1. Its onset is between 20 to 40 years, that is in the young age. It can be accompanied by infiltrative of thalmopathy that is Graves exophthalmosis, which is the hallmark of the Graves disease, and less commonly by the infiltration of infiltrative dermopathy, that is peritibial mixed edema. So there are two physical findings. Uh, one is the exophthalmos, and second is the peritibial mixed edema, which are the hallmark features of the Graves disease. This is most common, most commonly in the female, most commonly in the young, and the presentation is more quick. Patients with a grave disease have an increased risk of the other systemic autoimmune disorders. Whenever you see an autoimmune disease, this is a rule of the thumb that you will also see other autoimmune diseases like Sjogren's syndrome, Selig disease, pernicious anemia, Addison's disease, alopecia areata, vitiligo, type 1 diabetes, mellitus, hypoparathyroidism, myasthenia gravis, and cardiomyopathies. So whenever you find one disease, particularly you come across the grave disease in the clinical practice of type 1 diabetes. Uh, so you are supposed to look off after all these diseases by some of the major key tests so that any, any one of the thing cannot be missed. The most important auto Antibody is thyroid stimulating immune globulins that are TSI or TSH receptor antibodies TRAB. This, these are the synonymous terms that are the thyroid stimulating immune globulins or thyroid uh, TSH receptor antibodies, which is directed towards the epitopes of the TSH receptors and act as a TSH receptor agonist. Like TSH, TSI bind to the TSH receptor on the thyroid follicular cells to activate thyroid hormone synthesis and release and thyroid gland growth. That is the hypertrophy. Uh, this results in the characteristic picture of Graves thyrotoxicosis, which uh, with a diffusely enlarged thyroid, very high radioactive uptake and excessive thyroid hormone level compared with a healthy thyroid gland. And we will see in the uh, images in the next slide. So in Graves disease there are the formation of autoantibodies which act on the thyroid receptors and they stimulate the glands and as a, as a result following changes occur. Number one is that the gland become hypertrophy. Gland bury ho jati hai jise goiter kehte hai. Number one. Number two, uske production zyada ho jati hai that is hyperactivity and the resultant thyrotoxicosis.
Number three, as the gland activity increases because the th uh, these antibodies act like TSH, so whole gland become active in actual, so the iodine uptake is increased as well. When the iodine uptake is increased, so when we do a radioactive thyroid scan, then there is increased uptake and we will see this in the next slide. So this is the normal gland of the thyroid in the top right corner. You can see a less uptake of the iodine than are the Graves disease. There is diffuse uptake of the thyroid gland in both lobes of the thyroid. Then is the toxic multinodular goiter. There are few nodules in the thyroid gland which are active and the rest of the gland become inactive because it, the rest of the gland is under the effect of negative feedback. Then there is the toxic adenoma which is only one nodule which is active and hence it is taking thyroid uh, iodine contrast while the other gland become inactive and hence there is no iodine uptake. The second cause is toxic multinodular goiter. Toxic multinodular goiter or plumber disease account for 15 to 20 percent of the thyrotoxicosis cases. It occur more commonly in the elderly individual, especially those with a long-standing goiter. Thyroid hormone excess develops very slowly over the time and often is only mildly elevated at the time of diagnosis. So, toxic multinodular goiter is the second most common cause. It account for 15 to 20 percent of the cases it is present in the elderly or most of the time yon logo mein hoti hai jin mein pehle se goiter maujood hota hai iski jo symptoms hoti hain wo zyada subtle hain substantial elevation of the thyroid hormones are there so the symptoms are not as marked as were in graves disease these are the images of the multinodular goiter and the grave disease. In the grave disease, there is a smooth enlargement of the thyroid gland, while in multinodular goiter, you may see uh, or you may feel uh, multiple nodules in the thyroid gland. This is again Graves' uh, grade 4 toxic multinodular goiter. You can see many multiple nodules in the thyroid gland. Toxic multinodular goiter. The symptoms of the thyrotoxicosis are mild. As we discussed last, lastly, often because only a slight elevation of the thyroid hormone level is present and the signs and symptoms of the thyrotoxicosis are often blunted. Then we use another term that is apathic hyperthyroidism. Apathic hyperthyroidism is basically a hyperthyroidism which is present in the elderly. They have got high thyroid hormone levels when we do for lab tests, but they do not have any symptoms or they have got very less symptoms of the thyrotoxicosis. So, in the elderly patient, a very high thyroid hormone level may occur in the condition after high iodine intake, that is the iodinized radio contrast or amiodarone exposure. Okay? The third, uh, the most important third cause among the list of the most important causes is toxic adenoma. Toxic adenoma is caused by a single hyperfunctioning follicular thyroid adenoma and this, is, this disorder accounts for only 3-5% to 5 of the cases of thyrotoxicosis, though it is on the third number. The excessive secretion of the thyroid hormone occurs from a B9 mono, monoclonal tumor that usually is larger than 2.5 cm in diameter. The excess thyroid hormone suppresses TSH level. Radioactive iodine uptake usually is normal and the radioactive iodine scan shows only the hot nodule while the remainder of the normal thyroid gland suppressed because of the TSH level is low. So by the virtue of this slide I want to explain you whenever you do a radioactive iodine scan and you see a hot nodule this is toxic adenoma of course. And this is responsible for hyperthyroidism and the rest of the gland is suppressed. But if you do a radioactive iodine scan and you find a nodule which is not taking up the iodine, that is called cold nodule. So in the thyroid tissue, the hot nodules are B9 while the cold nodules are not B9. They are always malignant 
unless proved otherwise so remember hot is safe and the cold is not safe and must be followed up this is the hot nodule of the thyroid gland here is the case scenario uh, we will uh, read uh, you can read this scenario from the slide we will rapidly pass through it and in the end of the day you will be able to find the answer however we will discuss explanation maybe in the end of this lecture so there is a young female presented in the postpartum period with low fever myalgia palpitations on examination she is generally unwell and fine tremors are elicitable while outstretched hands neck examination show mild tenderness while no lymph nodes were palpable and she lost 7 kg weight in 3 weeks and the final what is the final diagnosis you are supposed to tell uh, this is uh, basically a subacute thyroiditis case uh, which is the next most common cause of the thyroid toxicosis it accounts for 15 to 20 percent of the cases a destructive release of the preformed thyroid hormone a typically nuclear scintigraphy scan show no radioactive iodine uptake in the thyrotoxic phase of the disease thyroid hormone level can be highly elevated in this condition so uh, you may see this is just an inflammation of the thyroid gland number one number two is there is no overactivity of the thyroid gland itself number three uh, because there is inflammation so there is just a destruction of the thyroid cells so preformed thyroid hormones are just released in the subacute thyroid uh, thyroiditis there is no production of the thyroid hormones so uh, about the radioactive iodine uptake scan there is no uptake of the iodine in the thyroid tissue this is the picture of the th subacute thyroiditis uh, you can see the radioactive iodine scan is almost negligible then is the iodine induced thyroid toxicosis iodine induced thyroid toxicosis also known as jord besidos syndrome it occurs in the patient with excessive iodine intake like from ionized radio, radio contrast study the antiarrhythmic drugs amiodarone which is rich in the iodine and bears some structural similarity to the t4 may cause thyroid toxicosis iodine induced thyroid toxicosis also occur in the patient with areas of the thyroid autonomy such as multinodular goiter or autonomous nodules iodine induced thyroid toxicosis appear to result from loss of the normal adaptation of the thyroid to iodine excess it is treated with cessation of the excessive iodine intake and with administration of the antithyroid medications usually after the depletion of the excessive iodine thyroid functions return to the pre-exposure level so the treatment of the iodine induced thyroid toxicosis is simple that you stop the exposure of the gland to the thyroid uh, to the increased iodine levels among the other causes are the uh, rare causes of the thyroid toxicosis exact that deserve mentioning that are the stroma ovarii is ectopic thyroid tissue associated with the dermoid tumor of the ovarian teratomas that can secrete excessive amount of the thyroid hormone and produce thyroid toxicosis the patients with uh, molar hydratiform pregnancy or choriocarcinoma have extremely high levels of the beta human chorionic gonadotrophins that is the beta hcg which can weakly activate the thyroid receptors at very high levels of the beta hcd activation of the tsh receptor is sufficient enough to cause thyroid toxicosis metastatic follicular thyroid carcinoma may also result in thyroid toxicosis and these lean maintain the ability to make the thyroid gland thyroid hormone and in patient with the bulky tumor production may be highly enough to cause thyroid toxicosis presentation of the thyroid toxicosis varies as follows uh, this is according to the age not every patient present in a similar fashion the, the, the young patients they have got exhibit symptoms 
of sympathetic activation like anxiety and hyperactivity and tremors and weight loss. In the older patients, they have more cardiovascular symptoms like dyspnea, atrial fibrillation and unexplained weight loss. So cardiac symptoms are present more commonly in the elderly patients and the younger patients have got more sympathetic symptoms. The patient with a grave disease, they have got uh, physical findings like grave ophthalmopathy and peritubal myxedema. Ophthalmopathy again is the hallmark of the Graves disease. So here comes the symptoms of the hyperthyroidism. This is well elaborated in this slide. It includes the weight loss, increased appetite, palpitations, agitation, anxiety, hyperdefecation, sweating or heat intolerance, irritability. So there is a frequency table of the thyroid symptoms ranging from the nervousness, increased sweats, palpitations, heat intolerance, fatigue, weight loss, short of breath, leg swelling, eye symptoms, hyperdefecation, menstrual irregularities and emotional abilities. Here are the signs. This is the clubbing, uh, hair loss, goiter, lid lag, peritubal myxedema, tremors and arrhythmias. So the tachycardia, goiter, skin changes, tremors, bruit over the thyroid gland, eye signs, atrial fibrillation, splenomegaly and gynecomasia. Tremor, peritubal myxedema. Again, these are the features of the hyperthyroidism. You may, uh, you may remind or you may learn by heart any of the illustration, and you will never miss it. This is uh, Graves' ophthalmopathy. That is the ex ophthalmos Graves' eye disease. It is associated with the grave diseases. This is the inflammation, hypertrophy, and of the uh, retroorbital muscles in the optic nerve compression or atrophy may be there. And the symptoms of the eye discomfort, grittiness, excessive tear production, photophobia, diplopia, and decreased acuity. And the signs include exophthalmos, proptosis, ophthalmoplegia, and edema of the eye. This is the MRI finding of the Graves of Thalmopathy. This is again of Thalmopathy in the Graves and the periorbital edema you may notice and also chemosis is there. Investigations are the TSH and the thyroid hormone level is the basic thing, of course. Autoantibody study is the second most important thing and skintigraphy that is the radio iodine uptake studies are the third thing. So here is a question is uh, low TSH is enough to diagnose thyroid toxicosis? You may have idea in your brains. So this is the answer. TSH has highest sensitivity and specificity no doubt. Diagnostic accuracy improve with measurement of free T4. Free T4 give baseline measurement of the degree of the thyroid toxicosis. It is important to monitor success of the initial treatment, though not always related to severity of the symptoms. Also, T3 thyrotoxicosis is also there. It exists. It can be sign of the early disease. So, initial investigations include TSH, T3 and T4 both, all. Autoantibody studies. The most specific autoantibody test for the autoimmune thyroiditis is the antithyroid peroxidase antibodies. And the teeter is usually significantly elevated in the most common type of the hypothyroidism, Graves' thyrotoxicosis, and usually are low or absent in toxic multinodular goiter and toxic adenoma. The thyroid stimulating immune globulin TSI level, if elevated, help to establish the diagnosis of the Graves' disease circulating antithyroglobulins antibodies are also present in the Graves disease. Scintigraphy, uh, if the etiology of the thyroid toxicosis is not clear after physical examination and other laboratory tests, it can be confirmed by the means of scintigraphy that is the iodine or technetium 
can be used for the thyroid screen and this figure I have explained in the lecture earlier so what is the treatment treatment is simple that are the beta blockers for the sympathetic stimulations that are the anti-thyroid drugs uh, to combat increased thyroid hormone levels there's the iodinized contrast agents to destroy the glands or radioactive iodines or surgery to cut off the gland so the beta blockers they do not treat hyperthyroidism in fact they block appearance of the symptoms like tachycardia anxiety sweating and tremors propranolol which is a non-selective beta blocker is the drug of choice and they are particularly useful in thyroid storm Antithyroid drug, the first drug is carbimazole. It starts functioning after 4 to 8 weeks and they continue to, uh, we continue to maintain maintenance dose for long. Uh, we have got two regimes. Uh, one is the titration upward regime in which we used to have thyroid functions after every one month or one and a half month that is four to six weeks interval and then gradually titrate up dose or there is a block and replace regime that is we block the thyroid gland completely with the higher doses of the antithyroid drug and the dose used for this is 45 milligram and then we uh, when the thyroid gland is blocked then we start putting thyroxine the first line is carbimazole and the second line is propyl thyroxine and propyl thyroxine is uh, the second line because it has got a small risk of hepatic reactions so again carbimazole and propyl thyroxine a granulocytosis occur in 0.3% of the patient taking carbamazole and 0.4% of the patient uh, taking propyl thyroxyl. So a granulocytosis is a rare side effect but we are supposed to be very much cautious particularly if the patient on the thyroid, uh, antithyroid drugs initially presented with the sore throat you are supposed to look into a granulocytosis. Patients are warned if the sore throat or uh, febrile illness develop, they should stop drug while CBC is rechecked. Other side effects are pruritus, allergy, dermatitis, nausea, and dyspepsia. Uh, Common adverse effect of the rash, granulocytosis, and hepatotoxicity. Propyl thyroxyl should be considered second line to carbimazole and only be used during pregnancy or breastfeeding or if an adverse reaction to carbamazole has occurred. The contrast agents, these agents provide effective temporary treatment of the thyrotoxicosis from any cause. Uh, sodium epodate or eponoic acid 500 mg twice daily for 3 days then 500 mg once daily can be given up to 8 months. The agents block the peripheral conversion of T4 to an active agent that is T3. These agents are very useful in patients who are very much asymptom uh, very much symptomatic. Then is the radioactive iodine. Uh, it destroy gland inside when it is given. It is contraindicated in pregnancy in the patient who are treated with radioactive iodine in teenagers or adults who do not have an increased risk of malignancy. It should be remembered this was a myth in, in the past. So we are supposed to be cautious about the pregnancy, children and contacts for two weeks. In surgery, uh, we remove some of the portion of the gland. We can remove whole gland, we can remove nodule and production of the thyroid hormone gets stopped and then the patient required levothyroxine for life. So this was the whole gland and this is the subtotal thyroidectomy in which half the gland half of the gland has been removed. 
this is a scenario you can read this uh, you can have pause of the lecture and you can completely read the scenario this is an interesting one and this must be known to every of the doctor before starting the house job so this is the thyroid storm basically and the, this is the life threatening complication this is the severe hypermetabolic state when the uh, it occurs when someone stops treatment or develop infection or has got surgery and all the symptoms are just enhanced heat intolerance become into high grade fever rapid heart rate become into cardiac arrhythmias and this is also called as a thyrotoxic crisis this is um, acute severe presentation of the pyrexia tachycardia and delirium it patient should be admitted and be given fluids anti arrhythmic drugs and beta blockers graves of thalmopathy for acute progressive exophthalmo intravenous methylprednisolone or intra for acute progressive exophthalmos uh, intravenous methylprednisolone 500 mg intravenous weekly or 6 weeks then 250 mg weekly for 6 weeks is the regime uh, oral prednisolone 50 to 60 mg can also be given without tapering <coughs> progressive act uh, active exophthalmosis can also be treated by retrobulbar radiation Orbital decompression surgery for severe cases may also be taken. Among the general measures, wearing of uh, to protect uh, retro or protruding eyes, uh, like uh, wearing eyeglasses, tapping of the lid shut during sleep if corneal drying is a problem, methyl cellulose drops may be useful. So this is the tabulated form of the management of the thyroid uh, hyperthyroidism you may see. Thank you.